Let's talk about the sprite drawing functions in GameMaker. You might have used functions like draw self and draw sprite. So let's talk about how they work and some other drawing functions that you may not have heard of but are actually pretty useful. Side note, there are many drawing functions in GameMaker and in this video we are only going to talk about the sprite ones. So if you want me to cover some other category of functions as well in a different video, let me know in the comments. These are all the functions we're going to talk about in this video. So let's start with the simplest, draw self. And for that we have to understand how drawing works in GameMaker. When you make an object, you give it a sprite and you place it in the room. When you run the game, you see that instance. It's automatically drawn as you would expect. In the room, you can rotate the instance, resize it, give it a color, and all of that will reflect in its sprite in the game as well. Now you can take control over how GameMaker draws that instance by adding a draw event to its object. When you run the game then, your instances will disappear because GameMaker has given control over how those instances are drawn over to you. And because you just added a draw event but you're not doing anything inside it, the instance simply doesn't appear. But you can still go back to how GameMaker was automatically drawing the instance with the draw event by calling the draw self function in there. Your sprite will appear again with all the rotation, scaling and color that you applied to the instance and if it was animating before, it will do that as well. Now beyond this, you can call functions like draw sprite or draw sprite ext to draw any sprite with any rotation, scale or color independent from the instance. So if you use draw sprite, you can give it a sprite to draw, the sub image or frame from that sprite to draw and then the position to draw it at. Here I'm just using the sprite and frame from the instance which are available through the sprite variables listed in the manual. But you can obviously use any other sprite or any other frame value, it's up to you. So this is simply gonna draw that sprite's frame without any transformations applied to it at this position that you give it. If you want to apply any transformations, you can use draw sprite ext that gives you a bit more control. So there are some extra arguments, like you can pass it the x scale and the y scale. One is the default, so I'll make it wider horizontally and smaller vertically. Then there's a rotation value from 0 to 360, so I'll rotate it by 90 degrees. Then there's the color, I'll make it red. And then you can pass an opacity or alpha value from 0 to 1. In the game, your sprite is gonna appear with all those settings. Also, if your sprite uses 9 slicing, then scaling with this function is going to use those 9 slices. Now you are in the draw event, you have all the control to yourself over what you want to draw and how many things you want to draw. So you can draw any number of sprites here. In the event, I'm going to reset this to a basic draw sprite that draws the instances sprite, its frame, at the instances position. Then I'll draw this second sprite on the top using the first frame from the sprite, a little above the main instance. You'll see it in the game like this. Now in this function call, because you have to give it a frame number to draw, it's gonna stay stuck at that frame if you simply give it a number. To animate it, you can now make a variable to store the frame number to draw and then every frame make it go up so the frame value changes and the sprite animates. I'll make that variable in the create event, then in the step event, I'll make it go up by a certain value and then in the draw event, make sure you use that in your draw function instead of a simple number. So running the game, you now see the sprite animation playing. You can go back to the step event and change the speed to match what you want. You can also factor in the speed value stored in the sprite by calling this function. Also, the origin of the sprite that you set in the sprite editor is used in these functions. So with the default top left origin, the sprite will start from the position that you passed into the function. But say the origin was middle center, then it would actually be shifted so the origin point lies at the position that you pass into the function. This is important because there are some functions that don't make use of the origin as you will see later in this video. Now the scale values in draw sprite ext are multipliers so 1 is default, 0 0.5 is half the width or height, 2 is double and so on. Now there is a function that actually lets you pass in the final size that you want to draw the sprite at instead of a multiplier. For example, if I have this 64 by 64 sprite and I want to stretch it over a 200 by 200 area, I can just pass that final size into draw sprite stretched and it will stretch the sprite for me. So this function basically has the same arguments as draw sprite and then it takes the final width and height for the sprite to cover 
I'll do something interesting here and draw the sprite at 0x0 zero zero and stretch it to the mouse cursor's location. And in the game, that is the effect that you get. Also, this function supports 9 slicing as well. Now, this is a function that doesn't use the origin of the sprite. So, no matter what origin you have set, it's always gonna draw from the top left corner at the position that you passed into the function and it extends it to the given size. This function also has an ext version that lets you pass the color and alpha, but this doesn't support rotation. Now there is a function for drawing just a part of a sprite, and guess what, it's called draw sprite part. You give it the sprite and the frame to draw, and then you give it four values which control how much of the sprite is cut out to be drawn. So you have the left and top coordinates to cut from. So zero by zero would be the top left corner from within the sprite, you can do something like 10 by 15 and it'll give you this. Then you pass the width and height to cut out from the sprite starting from the position you passed before. So say 32 by 32 would give you about this much from the sprite. After that you just pass the position where this part will be drawn. Again in this function as well the origin is ignored. So it will draw from the top left corner that was cut out. And so in the game you see this just a part of the sprite cut out and drawn separately. This also has an ext version that lets you scale the cutout part on the x and y axes and pass a color and alpha. Draw sprite general is the most powerful sprite drawing function because it combines draw sprite ext for the additional properties, draw sprite part for the cropping, and it lets you color the sprite as a gradient. It takes the sprite and the frame first, then it takes the four values for how much it should crop out of the sprite, just like draw sprite part. Then it takes the position where that cutout part of the sprite will be drawn. Then it takes the x and y scale, then the rotation value. Then it takes four values for the color gradient, I'll explain this soon. And then at the end it takes the alpha from 0 to 1. So the four color arguments are the color at each corner. So this is the top left corner, this is the top right, this is the bottom right, and this is the bottom left. So if I take a simple black and white sprite like this, and pass the arguments red, blue, red, blue, I will get this in the game. Or I could make it a simple vertical gradient with something like red, red, blue, blue, which will give me this. Now there is a function that lets you pull each corner of a sprite separately and distort it how you want. It's called draw sprite pause and after taking the sprite and the frame, it takes the x and y coordinates for the four corners. So there's the top left corner first, then the top right, then bottom right and then bottom left. Finally, it takes the alpha for the sprite. You can see for one of these corners, I've made it the mouse position. So in the game, it'll look like this. You can see the four points that the sprite is being stressed across and one of them is the mouse. You may not know this, but sprites are actually drawn using two triangles, which obviously makes up a rectangle, and the texture for the sprite is stressed out on those two triangles separately. Now this isn't usually a problem, but it can become a problem when using this function. Like you can see in this example how the head of the character is being pulled apart in two directions because it's just two different triangles being stretched separately. So just keep that in mind when you're using this function. The same thing also applies to the gradient in draw sprite general. Like you can see in this example from the manual where the gradient is being applied to the two triangles separately. There's this old function called draw sprite tiled which I haven't used in a long while because background layers basically take care of this for you but you can use this in certain situations. It takes a sprite and a frame and based on the given offset, it tiles the sprite everywhere. And finally, if you're using a sprite that was made in spine, there is a category of draw skeleton functions that you can use to draw them, but we're not gonna go into that in this video. If you want to know more, you can read about them in the manual. So that's all the sprite drawing functions. Make sure to read the manual and our blog that covers sprite transformations in a bit more detail. This is linked in the description. So I am planning to do more of these function category videos. So if there is any category of functions that you want to see covered on this channel, just let me know in the comments. Also go check out the video I did on collision functions. And remember, keep trying, keep failing and keep learning. That's the only way up.